Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, you know it. Uh, listen, this is not going to be a long Bible study, but uh, somebody had once asked me why no healing. Well, there's various reasons. Sometimes a healing will come, but it's not immediate. And sometimes the answer is no. Let's take a look at chapter 17 in the book of Matthew and verse 15. So that's Matthew 17 and verse 15. Now earlier, Jesus had given his disciples, the apostles, power over devils. Maybe we should take a look at that real quick. So let's take a look at that first since we want to build a foundation. Mark chapter 3 and verse 13. And he, Jesus, and he goeth up into a mountain and calleth unto them whom he would, and they came unto him. And he ordained twelve that they should be with him, and that he might send them forth to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out devils. All right, now let's go to Mark chapter 6. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's go to in Mark 6, let's go read, I guess, from the beginning. Verse 1. And he went out from thence and came into his own country, and his disciples followed him. Who's he? Jesus. And when the Sabbath day was come, he began to teach in the synagogue. And many hearing him were astonished. Now, he's in his own country, okay? And many hearing him were astonished, saying, from whence hath this man these things? And what wisdom is this which is given unto him, that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, the brother of James and Joseph and of Judah and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they were offended at him. And they were offended at him. But Jesus saith, uh, but Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own his own kin and in his own house. So a prophet is not without honor, but in his own country and among his own kin and is in his own house. Verse 5. Listen carefully. And he could do there no mighty work, save that he laid his hands upon a few sick folk and healed them. Why? Verse 6. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went round about the villages teaching. And he called unto them the twelve and began to send them forth by two and two and gave them power over unclean spirits. So he could cast out devils. Isn't that what we just read, Mark 6? Oh, yeah. All right, now we're going to go back to Mark 17. And... Uh, Verse 14. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic and sore vexed, for oft times he falleth into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples. And they could not cure him. 
Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. So this guy was falling into the fire and into the water. Why? Because the devil was trying to destroy this person. But Jesus rebuked the devil, and it departed from him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Verse 19. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could we not cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence and yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Verse 21, here's the punchline. How be it, this kind, this kind, goeth not out but by prayer and fasting. So evidently, this was not your average run-of-the-mill devil. This was probably a very high-ranking devil that required not just faith, but prayer and fasting. So, are there other reasons why uh, no healing? Well, you know, I had asked in the past for the gift of healing. Because I would love to go to a children's hospital and empty it out. Make all the chosen ones very unhappy because no more money. Uh, but then again, they'd probably try to do to me what they did to Christ and kill him. So, all right, well, uh, so, yeah, my answer was no. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, little background. You will find that uh, Paul here is talking in the third person, but he's, you'll find out eventually that he's speaking of himself. So, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 1. And watch out for those devils that deny that Paul's an apostle. Verse 1. It is not expedient for me doubtless to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body I cannot tell or whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such an one caught up to the third heaven. Did you know there's at least three heavens? Yeah. There's at least three. Verse, verse three now. And I knew such a man, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell, God knoweth, how that he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words which it is not lawful for a man to utter. Of such an one will I glory, yet of myself I will not glory, but in mine infirmities. Have you ever heard of an infirmer, infirmary, infirmary? Hmm, I know I'm not pronouncing that right. Infirmary. It's like a hospital. It's just another word, right? So an infirmer, infirmity is uh, somebody that has a health problem. Verse 6. So here it is. Paul's going to glory in his health problems, his infirmities. Verse 6. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man th should think of me above that which he seeth me to be, or that he heareth of me. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, 
There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I gl rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, I take pleasures in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Did you notice that? When we're weak in our flesh, we are strong in Christ. Therefore, I take pleasures, pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and in, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. I am become a fool in glory. Ye have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for nothing am I behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. All right, so sometimes we're giving, given a, a, a thorn in the flesh, an infirmity, so that Christ's grace may abound. You know, Paul had a problem and asked for it thrice, and, you know, he's, Jesus said, nope, I don't think so. My grace is sufficient for thee. That's kind of the Bob paraphrase. So, sometimes the answer is no, because, well, like we read earlier, people didn't really have any faith. Like we read in Matthew well, we could read in Matthew 13 and verse 58. And he, Jesus, and he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So sometimes you can get a no because people just, they want to get healed, but they really don't have any faith. Other times people get sick because of sin like uh, fornication and adultery. People will get venereal diseases. I mean, I once read that there's like, oh, I don't know, dozens of venereal diseases. You know, everybody pretty much knows about gonorrhea and syphilis, and you probably heard of chlamydia and genital herpes and AIDS and what have you. But uh, you can be forgiven for adultery and fornication, but sometimes you will still have to live with the consequences of sin. So, sometimes uh, that's what happens. Sometimes sickness happens from eating the wrong kind of foods. You know, People eat things that the Bible says not to eat. Do you know that every year people die from eating shellfish? Because it's a bottom feeder and it filters out poisons in the water. Um, I'm not saying it's, uh, how would I say this? It's not a salvational issue, in my opinion. But if you eat the things that God says not to, and you get sick from it, Whose fault is that? Is it God's fault? You know, God also, you know, people eat pork and God said don't eat it. And yes, I'm sure uh, people, uh, I don't know, I've heard people say that the pork's cleaner 
today than it used to be in the past. I don't know how true that is, being that uh, I think, what was it, Smithfield Farms? If memory serves me correctly, they are the largest producer of uh, uh, pork products in the, uh, the world. They were recently bought up by China, and uh, Chinese are not exactly known for being the cleanest people in the world. So, I don't know. But if you eat things that God says not to eat, you know, what can I tell you? But, uh, you know, God said not to eat rats and not to eat vultures. If you eat that kind of stuff and you get sick and then ask for a healing, eh, I wouldn't expect to be healed. You know, that I could be wrong. But uh, that's just a few of the reasons. Now let's take a look at Job chapter 1. All right, Job chapter 1. I've read this a couple of times, so, you know, those of you that have listened to me for a long time, eh, this will be kind of a repeat for you. But then again, there's always new people. Job chapter 1, verse 1. There was a land, there was, I'm sorry, there was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and eschewed evil. In other words, Job hated evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen and 500 she-asses and a very great household. Uh, you'd need a very great household as of, you know, servants and what have you. I mean... One person cannot watch 7,000 sheep. Ah, uh, just ain't going to happen. And a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the East. And his sons went and feasted in their houses, everyone on every one his day. Uh, most people, Bible's, Bible expositors think that uh, their day is their birthday. Every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sacrificed them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. Now, people will point out and say, Well, see, Job... Job uh, offered sacrifices for his sons, but not for his daughters. So they'll try to convince you that Job didn't care about his daughters. Well, I have a different way of looking at that. Maybe Job's daughters were much more godly than his sons. And they didn't need, Job didn't need to worry about uh, his daughters cursing God, but he had to worry about his sons cursing God. And that's why he did sacrifices for them. I don't know. That's just that's just me. Some guy that doesn't uh, watch much TV and has spent a lot of time reading the book. Now, verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. If you don't know who the just sons of God are, look in Job 38 and realize that they were shouting at the creation of the earth. Adam did not come until six days after the creation of the earth. And if you read Genesis 1, chapters 1 and 2, there's not one day, day 1, 2, day 3, day 4, day 5, day 6, day 7, day 8. Not one of those days does it mention the Lord creating the angels. So, one would have to assume that the angels existed prior to the Lord's creation of the earth. But you got to realize, the Bible is not the book of the angels. The Bible is the book of the generations of Jesus Christ and the sons of Adam. That's what the Bible is. It's the history book, right? 
his story, history, Jesus Christ. So, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Verse 7, And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Yo, Satan, what's up? Where are you coming from? What you doing? Uh, that would be the modern Bible's way of saying things. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught, for nothing? Hast not thou made an hedge about him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now, and touch all that he hath, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hand. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. All right, so the rest of the story is uh, Satan, uh, Satan was allowed to take Job's, his cattle and his oxen and his camels and then eventually his uh, his uh, children. But when you keep reading, well, let's take a look. So let's skip ahead to Job chapter 2. Because I don't want to make this a long, long, long study. Uh, verse 1. Again there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Now remember that the sons of God, uh, the next time you read Genesis and you get to chapter 6, remember that the sons of God, if Job 38, are angels. All right. Verse 2, And the Lord said unto Satan, Once comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, though thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now, and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. So in other words, you could do anything you want, but you can't kill him. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet unto his crown. Now here it is, Satan has the power of disease. He's the one that struck Job with boils. I don't know if any of you ever had boils on your skin. They're painful. So he had boils all over his body, from the sole of his feet all the way up to the top of his head. Boy, that is rough. Verse 8, And he took a pot shard to scrape himself withal, and he sat down among the ashes. Then said his wife unto him, Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Curse God and die. Boy, what kind of a great wife is that, huh? But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. So, sometimes disease or infirmities are a test of, of the Lord from Satan or from the Lord. Sometimes it becomes from not from having sufficient faith. Other times 
it's so that we lean upon the Lord even more strongly, which uh, I have a feeling with, uh, now this is April of 2020. We're in the middle of this coronavirus so-called thing. And I wonder if the real reason we're supposed to have all this is so that we de depend upon the Lord more. Now, I'm not saying this is a real thing because I don't know for sure. I have my suspicions. I think it's all a, a bunch of media hype because the media, the pharmaceutical companies, and the banks are all the same people. They're the same tribe, if you catch my drift, the chosen ones. But chosen for what is what the real question. And uh, if you don't know, well, may I suggest you uh, read <laughs> The Wheat and the Tares. Because <laughs> God's chosen the tares also. And you can read about that in um, Matthew chapter 13, you know. So, there are various reasons why the Lord says no to healing. And uh, you know what? When I first came to the Lord, I was, I was really sick. I mean, I, I was at the point where I was, I wanted to die because my suffering was so bad. Um... I caught this, well, this disease was a, was a cause from a sin. And uh, the Lord really spanked me for it as an unbeliever. And it eventually caused me to crawl to him on my hands and knees and with a contrite spirit and in repentance. So even though Satan probably meant it, for evil to destroy me God meant it for good so and we read in the following well in Romans 8 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose uh, I didn't love God then, but he loved me, and I don't know why, because I never did anything to deserve it. That is for sure. All right, well, uh, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and his only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.